right? Uh, can you hear me from the back? Can you hear me? Good. Uh, so, thank you very much. Uh, so, it's my great pleasure to be here to uh, speak in the usual classroom that, you know, I teach, but to a, you know, probably different uh, group of audience. Uh, so, I will try to uh, make my uh, speech, uh, make, make my lecture, um, you know, not too long, okay. So and then but I will welcome discussions, and then so I I feel a bit nervous because you know we have masters here. So <laughs> anyway, so this is uh, the outline of my lecture today. So I will start by uh, giving a fundamentals introduction on the computer computer speech processing. It will be very fundamental, uh, and then I will talk about spoken language technologies and highlight the state of the art. Uh, the, the technology actually have, have been advancing quickly. So, uh, so we have to know, you know what, is the, what the current status is and uh, what are the limitations of technology. So this is particularly important for, um, for the audience or for the people who would like to use, make use of speech technology. So you have to have good knowledge about the uh, limitations that that is even more important than you know the you know capabilities of the technologies okay and next and the major part of the talk will be on applications i will share with you some of the applications that we have been working on and also some of the recent applications that we are trying to you know go into okay which are very interesting in my view and so speech communication obviously involves two persons, a speaker and listener. It could be face to face and it could be um, in, through internet, voice of IP, Skype, telephone, and then keyword is language. So we use our language to communicate. So it's not just voice, it's, it's, it's speech spoken language. And of course, speech, uh, speech communication also involves uh, you know something other than linguistic information, and this is the um, uh, well-known uh, speech chain. So the speech communication starts uh, with the formation of a message uh, in the brain, and then so then uh, the messages go through the motor nerves and then control the movement of vocal muscles, vocal apparatus, and produce. Uh, so is there any? Laser pointer. Okay, and then produce acoustic waves, and the acoustic waves pick up by the listeners out the ears, and then convert into neural messages and go into the brain. So this is a really a complicated process involving uh, linguistic level, physiological level, um, acoustic level, and then. Um, or perhaps many other uh, functions. Now from engineering perspectives, we understand speech as a kind of signal which is transmitted either acoustically, that means you know, over the air, or electrically. And variability and invariability are core uh, key issues in speech. By variability, we mean that you know uh, different persons have different voice, have a diff produce different signals. Uh, different languages we have different uh, speech uh, uh, produced. But also, we notice that the invariability is also very important. Uh, say, for example, uh, different persons speak the same sound, and then we still perceive it as, as the same sound. Okay, so that is what we know as invariability. And for engineers, we are interested in whether we can capture, analyze, modify, regenerate, manipulate, okay, all different kind of, kind of manipulations of speech signals when the signals go into a computer. And we also we are also interested in, in uh, building computational models of speech communication, so that so that we can make use of these models to investigate 
the complicated speech communication process. And we have to ask why, why, why we are doing that, what for, okay, what are the applications? And then engineers have to understand that technology always has limitations. We have to, these have to be well understood. Now capturing speech is straightforward, okay, uh, to a computer, so uh, we speak and then there's a microphone like what, what I'm, you know, what I'm wearing, okay. And the, the microphone will convert the acoustic signal into electrical signals. And then come, coming together with the signals, we also have background noise. We, have, we may have competing speakers. We may have the room reverberation, microphone distortion. Different microphones may have different effect on the, on the speech. And uh, so these are all coming along with the speech. And then the speech will be digitized, and this is a very standardized, standard process, so we don't have to worry too much about that, because nowadays all computers are equipped with high-quality sound interface. So basically, you, you, know, you can consider this as almost distortionless. So after we, digi we digitize the speech, we can do a lot of different things. Okay? Um, from engineering point of view, Technology point of view, we would like to extract some signal features from those digitized uh, signals. Uh, you know, uh, you may know, you know, uh, the the most commonly used signal features are spectrogram, uh, spectral features, pitch, duration, intensity, and based on these features, we we try to correlate or establish some linguistic correlations, okay, with these signal features. And then, you know, in, ling in linguistic study of speech, we often talk about uh, stress, intonation, break, phrasing. So these are all about speech um, characteristics. And also, we, we, we may also like to do some uh, detection or recognition task or classification task on speech. And then we may also like to um, uh, do statistical modeling from, uh, with large corpus. I will come back to this point uh, very soon. And on the other side, so if we, you know, um, have a digitized data, speech data in the computer, and we manipulate data, we modify data, we can produce, you know, new kind of speech. Okay, this is what we call speech generation. Now, automatic speech recognition is one of the core technologies. Uh, I mean, spoken language technologies. Now, the, simply speaking, so for ASR, automatic speech recognition, speech recognition engine, so we convert a speech signal into words. So this is actually just a mapping process. And it doesn't mean that the recognized word can really be understood by the computer. Now, Uh, the basic principle of a complete uh, speech recognition system that can handle a large vocabulary is actually to find, it's a probabilistic process, okay? The principle is to find, determine the, the most probable, the most likely sequence of words based on two information. One is the signal similarity meaning that your input speech and then some pre-stored example speech. Okay, that is the similarity at the signal level and also some language constraints. Given that our speech signals are not produced arbitrarily, so there must be some constraints. And these constraints and this acoustic knowledge are reflected respectively by what we call acoustic models and language models. And then the recognition process is actually a search process. So search, match, and constraint match. Okay, so this is the basic principle of automatic speech recognition. Uh, we, we don't have time to go into the really technical details of that. Um, so the applications of automatic speech recognition, obviously we can do voice command control, we can use a speech spoken command to achieve, to, to uh, when we, you know, our hands are busy, so we, this is obviously a very important uh, uh, 
method. And then we can also make spoken dialogue system so we can really use our speech to talk to the computer. And then we can do voice dictation, so if we don't know how to type Chinese characters, we can speak to the computer, then we can have Chinese input. And then if we have a large amount of audio recordings of speech, like you know, my recording, uh, the equivalent of my lecture today, so can we use, we can ask, can we use automatic speech recognition to transcribe, okay, to make my spoken content to be represented by text. Now, um, the current level of speech recognition system, we often we can see really brilliant demonstration, okay, uh, through you know uh, those in, in those exhibition and also in YouTube's we we can see a lot of high performance speech recognition system. Now, my but I think a fair comment is that speech recognition system can have excellent performance in matched condition. Now the keyword is match. Match meaning that the speakers are matched, the speaking style matched, the environment are matched, the domain of spe speech are, ma are matched. Okay. So this if all these are matched, then we you know today's speech recognition system can really have excellent performance. And then another technology, sorry, level uh, consideration is that um, the server-based system usually perform much better than a standalone system. And if you have ever have experience using Siri, okay, and then for the Siri in, on the iPhone, the recognition is actually done on the remote server. Okay, so if it is, if it is disconnected, then the performance may be, you know, completely different. Okay, if the recognition is done at a server, then because of the, the, the huge computation power of the server side, and they can allow uh, the search over a very large space. Okay, so that's very different. And if the environment or input speech contain noise or other type of distortion like computing speakers. Uh, like uh, you know, you know, a, a truck you know passing by with a lot uh, loud loud noise, then the recognition system will have very poor performance. And also, the current system cannot handle new words, new domains, new speaking styles. And TTS is another side, so from text to speech, okay. And base, the basic steps in a TTS system. I involve text normalization, meaning that the given text have to be converted into a form that can be spoken. Okay, could be pronunciations uh, plus some, you know, stress symbols, intonation, marking. Okay, and then we also have to uh, specify or generate the prosody of the speech, and then the final step is to really produce the signal. And in terms of producing a speech signals, the most common way is to concatenate pre-stored segments. So you, you pre-record a lot of speech and then you find, you, you know, identify the appropriate units, you, you just connect them, okay? And then, but the pre-recorded segment may not be sound so well or, uh, you know, really um, reflect the, the, the the intonations or other features of your desired speech, so you may need to do some modification. And also, you may sometimes you would like to change the voice. Um, the most commonly known applications of speech generations uh, are those you know uh, the public announcement or information system in the airport. Okay, so with the dynamic information being updated, you cannot re you cannot really use pre-recorded voice to do the uh, speech generation. And also in a spoken dialogue system, you need the computer to talk to you, so you need the speech generation. And I think ebook, audio book, is now becoming more and more popular. And then now uh, researchers are, tech, are, try, are starting to tackle more difficult problems like uh, converting a voice into a particular person's voice 
and or to produce expressive speech. The technologies of speech generation is comparatively more mature and usable than speech recognition. And you know, state-of-the-art -art systems can have excellent speech intelligibility, very good quality, very good naturalness, and in a control domain, the intonation usually is done very well. Um, but text normalization is always a challenge. Say, for example, if you present the system with a table, or with a mathematical equations, or with a picture, and then the system may not know how to you know, really express. So this is uh, something that, you know, uh, I think in a practical system, uh, it never solved the problem, okay? And then, but nowadays, there's a very nice feature that to make a TTS or speech generation system trainable. That means if you have an existing uh, speech generation system, say, with my voice, and then if I have the luck to record, you know, one hour of speech from Professor Wong, then it is likely, you know, we can quickly adapt the existing system to speak uh, using Professor Wang's voice. Okay. Now this will, um, so here I'm like I would like to show you a, a demo. Uh, it's not really a demo; it's a, actually a YouTube. And then this is Rick Rashi, uh, the I think vice president for research in Microsoft, and then. He was giving a demo on the kind of adaptable uh, speech generation system. And then, so he speak in English, obviously American English, he cannot speak Chinese. And then the system will do speech recognition and do a translation and then speak out using the TTS. Now the good thing is that the TTS is adapted to Rick Rush's voice, and then obviously his voice is always English, right? So let's see what you know what uh, how it sounds like. So now we're taking the things that I'm saying and we're converting them into Chinese text. Now the last step that I want to be able to take in this process is to actually speak to you in Chinese. Now the key thing there is we've been able to take a large amount of information from many Chinese speakers and produce a text-to-speech system that takes Chinese text and converts it into Chinese language. And then we've taken an hour or so of my own voice and we've used that to modulate the standard text-to-speech system so that it would sound like me. So what you see now is the result of that change. I'm speaking in English, and hopefully you'll hear me speak in Chinese in my own voice. Again, the results are not perfect. There are in fact quite a few errors. There's much work to be done in this area. But this technology is very promising. And we hope in a few years that we'll be able to break down the language barriers between people. Okay, um, now personally, in my view, I don't really think that the adapted voice is really sound, sounding like, you know, Rick Rashid's English voice. But this actually, but this example shows the possibility. Probably, you know, as the technology is in, uh, improved, and then if people can use, you know, a longer duration, longer 
a larger set of data from Rikrashir, and then they, probably they can make the voice you know sound better, you know. But sometimes it's difficult to compare uh, English speech and then and Chinese speech. So anyway. Another type of technology um, is what we call speech enhancement. Uh, it's the primary purpose is to reduce the background noise of speech. Now it's so common that now our speech recording comes with noise, background noise. And then um, we, so speech enhancement is a technology to suppress the, the noise or suppress the voice of computing, computing speaker or to compensate some of the environmental reverberation. Now the whole purpose, the ultimate goal is to improve the perceptual quality of speech and to improve the intelligibility of speech. The state of the art is that stationary noise, meaning that the noise actually are the same all the time. Okay, spectrum, and you, you, you just like an air conditioner, you, you don't feel, you know, the, don't, the noise actually is changing. So for stationary noise, the current technology can handle it very well. For human voice, a lot of people talking, what we call multi-bubble talking, uh, is very challenging. If there's a strong competing speaker speaking, you know, uh, uh, next to you, then you know basically it's it, it's not possible nowadays to re really reduce. Let me just give you an idea by sh uh, playing you some sounds. So I will play to you the original noisy, I mean speech with noise first. A large size of stockings is hard to sell. Now that, this is the output by a typical speech enhancement algorithm. A large size of stockings is hard to sell. Okay, you, you can see that the noise is suppressed, but it also introduced some distortion in the signal. But bear in mind that this, the noise is actually very strong. This is actually 0 dB uh, signal to noise ratio, meaning that the energy of the speech and energy of the noise are equally strong. They're at the same level. And this is more difficult, it's a bubble noise. <laughs> okay, 0 dB bubble noise. And this is the enhancement result. <laughs> Cannot hear that, right? This is Cantonese. All right. So there are other related technologies. I think I may skip it for now. Um, so the technology trends is to make uh, things more robust, adaptive for language for speech. A spoken language we want to make it multilingual, multimodal, so to go with uh, other other modality like vision, gesture, haptics. And then we would like to make the speech, either input speech or output speech, we would like to allow it to be expressive. And then for the system, we, we would like the system to be customized and personalized. Okay. Um, so uh, i just like to give a, a very brief in, uh, uh, description of our efforts. So uh, you see Professor Wang's picture. So, so we are proud to have Professor Wang as one of the member of the lab. So the lab is called DSP and Speech Technology Lab. And then so uh, we started research uh, since late 80s. Uh, our early work focused on Cantonese, uh, focused on Cantonese ASR, speech recognition, and TTS. And then we are particularly um, experienced in terms of lexical tones and prosody. And then, so the lab is actually well known to be a resource center for Cantonese speech processing. So basically, uh, you will be able to find a lot of different, you know, in terms of data resources, uh, technology resources, uh, literature resources. So if you would like to uh, know more about Cantonese signal processing, you can come to us. And then, so our research has been all the time focused on the use, uh, emphasizing on the use of inclusive knowledge. And then in recent years, our work is not only for human-computer interaction, but also for human-human speech communication. And then we also um, very active in interdisciplinary studies and collaborations. I will give you some examples. And then we also aim at providing engineering tools to assist research in language and speech. So I 
perhaps I can skip this. Now, one major direction of our interdisciplinary research is to deal with speech and hearing disorders. Uh, speech processing technology can be very useful in the assessment and the rehabilitation of speech and language of speech and hearing disorders. Now, we have been working on. Uh, hearing devices, we are also working on speaking aids, so to try to help those people who don't, who cannot speak, to provide a device, a method for those people to speak. And we are also working on the assessment of disorder and voice and speech. So for the hearing part, uh, we all know that hearing impairment is very common. And then it, the most commonly used assistive technologies are known to be hearing aids, which primarily is to amplify the signal. Okay, for those kind of hearing loss, which only uh, you know involve the conductive loss, meaning that only the signals from the outside to the inner ear is attenuated, so we can just amplify that. Okay, so so we use hearing aids. But for those um, disorders or hearing impairment which involve sensory neural hearing problem, impairment, then we have to use, recover those connections, transconductions from uh, you know, the acoustic to the neural side. So we, re we have to rebuild this, sort of the, uh, the, this uh, mapping. So, and this kind of device is known as the cochlear implants. Now, cochlear implants is basically a, a surgically uh, is an electronic device that can have to be, uh, you know, inserted into the human body under the skin, okay, by surgery, and there's an outside part uh, of the of the implant which actually is just like a speech processor. This part will accept using a microphone will receive um, speech signal and then process signal, extract some good features of the signal, and then transmit the signal into the inside body component by RF, radio frequency wave. And then the internal part will then generate some electrical current to stimulate the nerves. Okay, so that's the basic principle. Now the existing cochlear implant devices, oh, there are a lot of people are, are using that now. And the, but the major complaint is that the pitch, which are so important for tone languages, like in Cantonese we have uh, uh, nine different tones. Okay, that the pitch sound, the pitch information cannot be well represented in the cochlear implant, and then there is a significant um, performance difference for tone recognition uh, between normal hearing and you know cochlear implant patients. So our work is a collaborative research with medical doctors and audiologists, and we develop new signal processing methods, trying to make those pitch or tone related information well better represented, okay, in the cochlear implant. So what we did is that we developed new signal processing methods, so I which I would not go into detail, to emphasize the periodicity or harmonics of the speech, and then try to deliver this information into the inner part, in, internal uh, component of the cochlear implant. And then we also run, try to test this, the effectiveness of these algorithms, uh, test the recognition performance in terms of tones and, and general speech recognition, okay, uh, by real cochlear implant patients. So this is uh, this picture is showing you know how the tests were done. Actually, you will see that you know this is the cochlear implant, in external part of course you can only see the external part, and but this test implant is connected to a computer, so the computer will generate uh, some different so enhanced stimuli into the speech processor, and then so so that the uh, uh, the listener will receive 
uh, tone enhanced uh, speech stimuli. Okay, and then the the test subject will be asked to choose uh, among different words. As you can see, these four words are differing from each other only in terms of tones. And then the, the semantic difference is very subtle. So we would like to detect you know, how, whether the uh, subject can really recognize the tones. For CI, I mean, cochlear implant, implant subject, they may have difficulties or greater difficulties to differentiate these words. So these are the uh, pinyin, okay, so uh, you can see that the tones are different. Now another research that we have been working on is on the um, voice disorders. Now basically this voice disorder is a kind of ab ab uh, abnormality of voice, okay, in terms of pitch, in terms of volume, in terms, in terms of resonance. Usually it's caused by irregular masses of your vocal system, some nodules, polyps, Sores on your on our vocal uh, system, vocal cords, and usually it is caused by intensive and inappropriate use of voice. Uh, school teachers, you know, are you know highly risky, especially primary school teachers. They always have to speak loud. Okay. So in clinical um, treatment or in cl clinical practice. Uh, Speech therapists usually use listening, you know, perception, to try to judge whether a, noise, uh, a voice is abnormal or normal, or what kind of abnormality and what kind, uh, what degree of disorder. Okay. So, for uh, you know a practitioner to be able to do that, he or she has to go through a long training, and then this training is actually done, you know like a you know, private tutor. It really have to do that in a, in a current clinical practice. Okay. Now what we have been doing is that we first, we try to develop a kind of training tool to help those um, speech therapists who may not have enough training in voice therapy to listen to different type of voice and, and train them to be able to use their perception to evaluate the voice. Now what is more, more important is we, will, we would also like to develop signal processing methods that can do objective voice assessment. Let me show you a few examples. Now this is actually a normal voice and then here you can see this is the signal waveform time domain. Okay. And this is the pitch, which is quite constant, doesn't change. And intensity is also it's a constant. So this is normal. Okay. And then if you zoom in to look into the details of the signal waveform, it's very regular, very beautiful. And then the spectrum is also very, you know, looks very beautiful. Now this is the a pathological voice. If you listen to that, okay, you can hear that there are some problems. Now if you look at the waveform, okay, it's very irregular in terms of, uh, so it's not periodic basically. And then also the spectrum also looks very noisy if you compare with the normal one, okay? And uh, another type of disorder, uh, very commonly known disorder is aphasia. Uh, in Chinese, uh, 失语症. Now it's a kind of impairment of language caused by stroke and or other type of injury to the brain. And then the patients will have difficulties producing fluent and intelligible speech. And then so we have been working on is developing a large database for aphasia speakers, and this is in collaboration with uh, the Speech and Hearing Science of, of Hong Kong U. And then we also 
focus on analyzing the speech characteristics of this kind of speech. So, um, okay, maybe I can skip that. So that's about speech and language disorder, or hearing disorder. The second direction of interdisciplinary research uh, that we, you know, we actually we are actively working on is on how to apply uh, spoken language technologies in the studies of linguistic language. Now, low cost nowadays, no low cost digital storage and uh, rapidly growing transmission bandwidth give us a lot of data. Okay. It's so easy to make recordings. It's so easy to uh, keep all these recordings. Okay, a few tens of dollars, you can get uh, you know, 10, 16 gigabytes storage. Okay, you can store a lot of uh, your voice or any kind of audio sound. Okay. Now, how are you going to deal with this audio? recordings effectively. This is a big, big problem. Okay, it's, it's not like a picture, okay. From picture you can you have a two-dimensional kind of uh, display and you can say oh this is uh, what blue, this is red. But for for audio you really have to listen from the very beginning to the very end so that you know the content. So it's it's so difficult for for human to really process this data. Now, computer speech processing can help linguistic research to leverage the huge amount of resources, audio or data resources nowadays. Now, this uh, involves, you know, the automat automated annotation of speech recordings and statistical analysis of large corpus, and perhaps some techniques to automatically discover some unknown patterns in the speech. Um, automatic alignment of speech actually is uh, kind of we 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 see it as a by, byproduct of speech recognition. Okay. Now in linguistic research, we often need to analyze, uh, you know, a recording, a speech recording. We would like to locate the boundaries of words, boundary of syllables, duration of the phonemes, uh, duration of the vowels consonants, locate the breaks. Okay, so these are all, um, you know, of great interest by linguists. And uh, if the speech corpus is large, then this will be a very tedious and time-consuming task. Automatic speech recognition technology can be used for this purpose. Now, now in this diagram, we show the operation of a general automatic speech recognition system. So basically, you have an input signal, you have a search engine, then you have acoustic models which actually represent the signal features of, of uh, your speech, and the pronunciation dictionary is representing, you know, how you know a word is really pronounced by basic sounds, and then you also have a language model which actually define the grammar. Okay, so with all these constraints. Your input speech is compared with these acoustic models and constrained by these dictionary and models, you will be recognized the content of the input speech. Okay, so this is a basic operation of general automatic speech recognition system. Now for time alignment, we assume that we know the content. Okay, so basically you we know what is being spoken, but we don't know, you know, a where a particular word is being spoken and how long it is being spoken. Okay, then, then actually this is, uh, uh, you know, easier process than speech recognition. So we use the same technology, we use the same uh, data resources, but we know we have a, you know, uh, one additional constraint because we know the content and then the output will be the exact time boundaries of all items in your speech. Okay, 
So it's just like automatically segmentation system. Okay. So I skip the procedures. Now this is a, a typical uh, outcome of applying uh, voice uh, 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 automatic alignment on long sentences. Now what why is this interesting? There are research showing that you know if you count the duration of the available broadcast collection, radio broadcast collection in the world, there could be 100 million hours. Okay? And that will be 11,000 years of only about broadcast collection. So if you really want to find out something, or some, you, you, if you like to you know, uh, do research, linguistic research, with these resources, that would be really, really difficult. Okay? Now there was a project by the University of Oxford and University of Pennsylvania uh, named Mining a Year of Speech. Now how many hours in the year? It's 8,000 something okay and this project they 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 process about 5,000 hours okay they have some very rough word level transcriptions of these recordings and then they process this all the recordings and then they can find out the exact phoneme boundaries sentence boundaries word boundaries okay break boundaries of all these 5,000 years uh, 5,000 hours sorry speech okay now what is this for so we know that the this spoken corpora is very different from language corpora spoken corpora contains additional information such like this the speaker's voice characteristics the speaker's emotion the speaker's uh, speaking style habits so all this interesting information if we can efficiently analyzing a large amount of speech, and then we will be able to answer many interesting research questions with reproducible scientific evidence. For example, do, do women speak faster than men? Now we can make use of those segmentation, automatic segmented data to do that easily. Suppose we have thousands of hours of data. English, we separate men's speech, women's speech, and then we measure the phoneme duration, and then we come calculate statistical distribution. Then we can answer this question. Now on the language corpora, corpus, you cannot do that. You don't really know, okay? This is one example. And other examples like how is Indian English different from British English? You know, what will be the different sort of uh, articulation of the same phoneme? Okay, so and this can be done by comparing, you know, the extracted phonemes from different corpus and then uh, do statistical analysis on their properties. Um, I think there are some uh, linguistics researchers or students here okay so um, you may have heard about sparse actually it's a very useful tool uh, that you know um, very user-friendly tools for automatic alignment and segmentation okay and it's developed developed by uh, CNRS in France now currently it supports uh, English French Spanish I think this is not Taiwan Mandarin it should be Minan Okay, uh, nine, you know, eight or nine language, and then actually we are now working with them. We will add Cantonese. So what, what the two, what these two can do is, it has all the available resources for automatic alignment. So what we need to, what you need to do, is you make a recording or you download a recording in a particular language, and then you. Up, you load this uh, wave file into the tool 
and then the two will automatically do the segmentation for you. Okay. So this is a very useful tool, and I think it's it is publicly available. You can try, or you can wait. You know, if you are interested in Cantonese version, okay, you can wait for a while, and then we, I think it can be done in a few months. And then another very interesting uh, idea I would like to share with you. I happen to come across uh, this website, G uh, Quick Speech. Okay. Now it is an effort. It's not technology. It's an effort try to quantify a person's communication skill based on his or her speech. to give you a score on how well you speak, you make a speech, all right? And then what they do is very simple. They actually, they go to the YouTube, you know, on the YouTube, there are a lot of recordings, YouTube clips on those, uh, you know, American presidents, US presidents, uh, UK prime ministers, and then, you know, uh, uh, Mr. C. Y. Love's speech. Okay, they just cut one minute of speech, and then they do analysis. But at present moments, I think the analysis is manual. Now the question is, can we automate it? Okay, now, this is a very very interesting uh, uh, project that I'm I'm, cons I'm considering, and then um, I think the, the the kind of force alignment will be very useful uh, in, in, in this uh, project. So let me conclude. So there are a lot of technology advancement. So we are enjoying all the, you know, a lot of uh, applications with audio, with video, with, with, with image. But technology advancement is not just about uh, playing with the Siri, uh, watching the YouTube, uh, Xiaomi uh, Hezi, you can see a lot of uh, movies. And then for researchers, or for technology developers, or for students, technologies actually empower us with you know, good abilities to explore our world. It's like a tools, very powerful tools. Can be microscopes looking into details, could be wide angle camera looking at the back, the very wide areas. Now we have to learn how to use it. And then they will, you know, make particularly linguistic research, you know, really, you know, uh, a new page. Okay. So I think that's all I would like to say today. So thank you very much. Actually, we hard code everything, okay? In a speech recognition system, so we, we would not really treat this, you know, as a grammatical rules or lexical rules. We probably would just keep Sufan as one item and Chi Sufan as another item. So we, we don't have, a, you know, linguistically very accurate definitions on a word. So that's how we do that. You know, in a, in a system, we just keep it as two different items. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Sometimes, like, he will be given some person, some bilingual person. Okay. He or she can speak like a perfect and like a perfect. Professor Wang. Yeah, he's like a very good, perfect example. Yes. They use something and change the model for what more people. Yes. Now, um, if you know, we can luckily have Professor Wang, uh, you know, to provide speech. Then I'm quite confident we can produce a bilingual text speech system with perfect, you know, voice, and then um, from Professor Wang. But the demo that I show is Rick Rashid. It's difficult to teach Rick Rashid to speak Mandarin. Uh, within you know a few months to speak now what we so the limitation is that we have to use the English speech of Rig Rashi to adapt a Chinese speech generation system so only to adapt the voice part. okay that is the most difficult uh, part. I think in your case I think bilingual person I think the job will be probably easier. And then, of course, the performance will be better. Okay. And what is the, uh, the nature of everything? What is what more, what more than that make some basic fundamentals underlying that? Mm -hmm. If we have one basic principle, mm -hmm. then we can apply the findings of these bilingual speakers to uh, the speaker. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yes. I think so. So any questions? I have a mic very minor question. So what's the answer of the uh, who is the best speaker, man or woman? Women. Okay. <laughs> and there is about um, I think and the the difference is so significant. It's not so significant, but it's very consistent. Yeah. You, you can check out the white paper of this um, the project that I mentioned, Mining a Year of Speech, there's a white paper final report, and this is a very little study done within the scope of the project. You can check it. There are also some, a few others, uh, other projects, and this is actually, was, this, was, this was done by Mark, Mark Lieberman. He, he said that he, said that he used a breakfast time to, do, to complete the whole experiment. So it's, it's so simple. Yes. And yes. That could be a very controversial yeah. argument. Um, it's true that uh, you know now the data-driven approach dominates, meaning that if you have you are able to collect you know unlimited amount of data that covers all different types of speech, different types of voice, different types of word combinations, language grammars, then the system performance will you know keep go keep going up. And then if you take a, a different approach, you say that, oh, I don't need so many data, but I, I would like to apply linguistic knowledge, you may not be able to see, you know, um, you know, a same amount of improvement in a short period of time, okay? So then that depends on, you know, uh, whether you, if you are doing technology development, so what you care, uh, all you care is about the performance of your product, now then people will say, oh, don't go to the linguist. Okay, so this is really true. But my experience that I, I start to work on speech, speech in the year that the computation power and storage were very expensive. So I rely a lot on linguistic knowledge. 
you know, I, I, I don't think that I could really do my, could not do my job without linguistic knowledge, although I was not linguistically trained. But I think I, I really appreciate, you know, the contribution from, uh, you know, my little you know, uh, part of linguistic knowledge. But nowadays, if you talk about system performance of huge system, you know, just like Google, right? Google have a lot of resources, a lot of data, and that they, are, they are simply making guesses based on data. They are not really understand, try to understand the content. Okay, so so the same the, the, the same problem, same argument. 